Hey everybody, Tom Billington here, Keller Williams Premier Realty. It is Thursday, January 2nd, 2020. Hope all of you had a great New Year's Day yesterday and uh, are enjoying a couple days back at work before the weekend. I know it's, uh, it's kind of hard to get back in the swing of things after the holiday season. And this year is no different, especially with Christmas and New Year's being right in the middle of the week. Uh, I know kids were back at school today all over the metro and um, probably not exactly excited about it, <laughs> nor are uh, any of us to be back at work. But here we are and uh, wanted to <laughs> just touch base on a topic that uh, that comes up when I'm working with sellers and it's multiple offers. Um, if you are fortunate enough to have a home that is um, in multiple offers. You have a home for sale and let's say you have an open house or you have a number of offers come in at a certain point in time. Um, it's called multiple offers. And what we will do as realtors is if we're getting some feedback from agents, uh, buyer's agents that say, hey, we'd like to make an offer. And we're hearing that maybe two or three or four or more people are making offers on a property that we have listed we will call for what's called highest and best offer. And typically by some time, so let's say it's in the morning, we have maybe five offers coming in, or we've heard about offers coming in, we'll set something called highest and best, usually for about 12, typically not a whole day ahead of time. Sometimes we will, but depending on when we think we're gonna get offers, we will put on the MLS listing, we will say, okay, highest and best offers, uh, requested by, let's say, three o'clock on Sunday or something like that, if it's a Saturday. Um, that enables the agents who are thinking of making an offer on behalf of their clients, that lets them know how much time they have to get the offer done, how much time they have to work with their, with their clients to get that offer put together and signed, and then over to myself as the sales agent uh, for, the, for the listing. It also enables other agents to know, hey, we better get our tails over there to see this home um, if there's already multiple offers on it um, or if they're calling for highest and best. If, if their client really wants to see that home, typically the agent will get them in there right away to, um, to take a look at the home and then see if they want to make an offer as well. So um, highest and best is kind of how we do that. Now, once we get, once that time frame ends, we will, um, as agents, we will look over all of the offers. And typically what I will do is I'll write up an email for my client, the, the seller. I'll write up an email that says, okay, here are the three offers or four offers or whatever that came in and what the components of those offers are. So it may be uh, you're looking for closing days, you know, whatever closing date they would like, the buyer would like you're looking at earnest money, you're looking at the amount of money they're putting down on, on the property. You're also looking for um, proof of funds, so proof that the buyer actually has the funds. Typically, they'll get a, a loan approval letter from the buyer's lender that says, hey, Bob and Susan Johnson are able to purchase this home, um, all of that, and then here's, a, here's proof of it in a letter from their lender. Sometimes buyers will also write a personal letter to the seller with a picture and say, hey, we love this house. Here's our background. Here's our story. We would love to raise our children in this home or we have these other circumstances that make this the perfect house for us. Please choose us. <laughs> Please choose our offer over the others. Um, the, then, um, so once you've so there's a number of different factors that are going into it. I think closing date, closing date, um, earnest money, and um, the definite that um, that the funds are available by um, with a letter from the lender. Those are the most important things. Um, also, cash offers, and it happens maybe five percent of the time you'll get a cash offer. Cash is king. Um, if you don't have um, an appraisal on a uh, on a property um, that is really that's a good thing so to have a cash offer that's going to probably bring you up to the top of the prospects list for 
uh, for buyers that the sellers are going to be um, considering. So a number of different factors that sellers are looking for that's going to tip the scales to your to your offer. Um, typically, it's trying to just make the transaction as smooth as possible uh, for your for your sellers, and that's what I'm advising them as an agent. I don't typically advise someone to say, "Okay, pick this one and not that one." I just lay it out as evenly as possible and just say, "Okay, here's there are pros and cons to all of these." Um, you know, if there are questions about a, um, a buyer's capability in purchasing a home and there's four other offers, you probably are going to pick one of the four other offers. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible for the seller. So once the buyer, um, once the buyer's offer is accepted, once the seller decides, okay, I'm going to pick this one from the Johnson family over here, um, if the price is right, they will just accept it for, uh, for what it is. And if they have any, um, questions about it, I will ask the other agent. Occasionally what happens, <laughs> thanks Tom, <laughs> I'm getting some comments on here. Um, if if you have um, a difference in price considerations though, the uh, the seller will put back what's called a counter offer and say, you know, instead of 510000 which is what your offer was, we want 520000 And I'll send that back to the buyer and say, okay, buyer, buyer's agent, um, my client would like uh, this amount, let's say say 520, and your buyer is saying 510, can we come to 520, you know, can we, uh, can we meet in the middle to 515, something like that. So as agents, we're trying to broker the, no pun intended, trying to broker the two, the two sides together to get a signed purchase agreement and then move on. Um, we've talked about kind of what happens next with an inspection period, uh, with an appraisal if there's a loan involved, and then setting that um, if there's anything that comes out of the inspection that needs to be fixed, we get that done. And then we set the closing date um, or make sure that the closing date can happen. And then we close on the house. So um, a lot of different things, a lot of different moving parts happen when you're dealing with um, offers on a house and multiple offers especially. So what I'm trying to do as your agent is to get you the most amount of money in the least amount of time for your home. Um, if you get into multiple offers, a lot of times you're going to probably get a little bit more than what you've asked for in a, in a property. The agents know that if they are submitting an offer with multiple offers on it uh, for a home, that they're going to have to make it as sweet as possible for your uh, for their buyers to get the house. So they may have formerly only been wanting to offer a certain amount of money. They may have to up that a little bit. Uh, and there's some other ways to, to work with that too. So that's kind of what we do as agents to get you the house that you're looking for. And also as a seller's agent to try to get you the most amount of money um, in the least amount of time. So if you have any questions, please give me a call, 651-402-6356. Uh, try not to do any sort of hard sales stuff here. Just this is more informative videos for folks. Um, if you have questions about real estate or the current market, um, I do have a weekly email that I send out. Uh, you can write me at uh, tombullington at kw.com or give me a call, 651-402-6356, or just shoot me a text with your email address and I'll set you up on my weekly email. Um, anyway, so I hope you have a great evening and uh, I guess third day of the decade is tomorrow. So um, hope all of you are well and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.